Welcome to another video. We have a radical equation right here, similar to something I did recently, and we're going to adopt a similar strategy. Now, if you can, if you're very familiar with numbers, if you look closely at this equation, you can guess what the answer is. We're supposed to find all real values of x. In short, there is only one real value of x that satisfies this equation. And if you look very well, skillfully, you could tell what the answer is. But I always like to use a general strategy in case it is not easy to guess what the answer is. So what would I do? Like I did in the previous one, I am going to say, let the first one here be a. Let this be b. And this is our typical C, but C is given and the unknown is inside the radical. Let's see how it works out. So let's do it. So let's write those assumptions. We're going to say, let A be equal to the fifth root of 16 plus the square root of x. And let b be equal to the fifth root of 16 minus the square root of x. Um, what else do we need? Well, we don't know yet, but we can say a plus b is equal to two. So here we go. So a plus b will be equal to two. Now this is what we need to solve. That's the equation. Now, what can we do with this to help us solve this? Well, we need to get rid of this fifth roots. And how do you get rid of fifth roots? Well, you need to generate the fifth powers. Okay, so we need this to be a to the fifth, b to the fifth. But we can't just do that in algebra. We have to raise both sides to the fifth power. So what we can do is say that a plus b to the fifth power will be equal to 2 to the fifth power. And we know that 2 to the fifth is 32. That's easy to compute. What is hard to compute is this guy here, a plus b to the fifth. So we have to do use binomial expansion, okay? And if we use binomial expansion, actually I would just want to go straight using Pascal's triangle. Let me write out pa Pascal's triangle and we're going to use it to compute to generate this fifth expansion. So Pascal's triangle says, if it's just a binomial, you're gonna have one A and one B. But if you raise it to the second power, it's gonna be one A, two AB, and you have to have one A squared, two AB, and one B squared. If it's raised to the third power, you're gonna have one A cubed, you're gonna have three AB squared, all those terms you just keep coming down, 3a squared b rather, and then you have 3 and you have 1. If you raise it to the fourth power, it's going to be 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And if you raise it to the fifth power, which is what we're looking for, it's going to be 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. So these are the coefficients of the expansion. So the beauty of Pascal's triangle is you don't have to compute any combina uh, combination, no you don't want to do any of those things. You just want to use the numbers. So what do we do? So it means that the very first term here is going to be 1 times a to the fifth power. So it's going to be 1 times a to the fifth power plus the second term is going to have a coefficient of 5. 5 times a. This is the fifth power. The next is going to be the fourth power and b is going to show up because the total exponent must be 5 every time. So this is going to be four of this and one of this plus what's the next term? Well, it's going to have a coefficient of 10 and this power goes down by one. That's a to the third and b to the second. And the next one is going to be 10, this one, and it's going to be this power goes down. It's going to be a to the second, b to the third. And the next one is going to be five plus five. Then you have a, b to the fourth, and the last one, coefficient of one, is gonna be plus b to the fifth. And we said the answer on the right-hand side is 32. Ah, that is our expansion. 
How does this help me? Well, it helps because I know the answer to a to the fifth and to b to the fifth. What is a to the fifth? a to the fifth is if I raise this to the fifth power, this is going to go away. What I have left is just 16 plus the square root of x, right? So I can move this over to that side and I can move this over to that side so that what I have will be 5a to the fourth b plus 10a cubed b squared plus 10 a squared b cubed plus 5ab to the fourth will be equal to 32 minus a to the fifth minus b to the fifth. There you go. So what is a to the fifth and what is b to the fifth? Well, we can quickly compute that here. Let me get rid of this Pascal's triangle and do all the rough work on this side. So here we go. We know that a to the fifth is going to be just 16 plus square root of x. And we know that b to the fifth is just going to be 16 minus the square root of x. So if we want to take care of this, 32 minus a to the fifth minus b to the fifth is going to look like this. It's going to be 32 32 minus 16 minus the square root of x minus 16 plus the square root of x. Okay, so what do I have? This is 32 minus 16 minus 16, that's 0, minus this, minus, everything gives me 0. So everything on the right hand side turns out to be 0. Now, let's focus on this. Whenever something looks like this, you get excited because if you can factor something out, you have something to work with. So let's look at this very well. What's here? What can we factor out? I know that mm, A is everywhere. Nice. B is also everywhere. Nice. What else? I also know that 5 is everywhere. So I got three things that's everywhere. So I'm going to take out 5ab. So 5ab factored out. What's going to be left here? It's going to be a cubed plus what's here? It's going to be 2a squared b. Is that right? Plus this is going to be 2ab squared and this is going to be b cubed. At this point, if you pay close attention to what we've got, life is made very easy because 5ab is equal to 0 or this long thing is also equal to 0. Supposing this is equal to 0, would it make sense? This cannot be equal to 0 because it is a sum of two positive terms, because the square root of any number is positive, and 16 plus a positive number is positive. The, the fifth root of any positive number cannot be zero, so this doesn't make any sense. But this can be zero, because you can have this be equal to 16 and you get zero, so we don't know yet. But that's the only thing that makes sense, if we're gonna get real solutions. So, without laboring on this one, I'm going to focus on this and say that 5ab is equal to 0, which means that ab is equal to 0. But we know that it's either a equals 0 or b equals 0. But we said a cannot be 0 then b must be 0. Okay, so we say since a is not equal to 0, b is equal to 0. And if b is equal to 0, we can come here and focus on this guy and say that the fifth root of 16 minus the square root of x is equal to 0.
which means if it raise both to the fifth power, 16 minus the square root of x will be equal to 0. So the square root of x is equal to 16. If you square both sides, x must be 256. If we plug in 256 here, what do we get? We're going to get 16 plus 16 is 32. And the fifth root of 32 plus this is going to be 0 is equal to 2. In fact, that is the only real solution. You can find another solution from simplifying this and solving for both a and b by factoring, but you're not going to get anything better than this. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.